Dice greetings, wherever you are, welcome to Hangzhou Asian Games. Now these are exciting events, these are exciting games and it is on track to be the most exciting ever. I'm talking about the fact that uh, a couple of days into the games, a new record has been set, an old record smashed. And there's a record number of events here at the Asian Games than the Olympics itself. Can you imagine that? I mean, Paris, watch out. Um, now, of course, in the past couple of days, I had the opportunity to talk to a number of officials, including Randir Singh, he's the acting president of the Olympic Council of Asia. We talk about so many things. We talk about the organization, the pomp and pageantry of the opening ceremony, of course. But we also talk about the athletes, the games themselves, which are at the center of these sporting competition. And we also talk about the unifying power of sport. Uh, whether you're Chinese, Japanese, Syrian, Jordanian, or Iranian, we can all be brothers. We should all be brothers, such as the unifying power of sport. And, you know, this is a theme that Randir Singh keeps coming back to, and many have been coming back to, right? Heart to heart at future. This is so dear to my heart, and I know this is dear to the hearts of many. But first, let's watch my interview with the acting president from the OCA. President Singh, welcome back to Hangzhou, China. I think you just brought the house down last night during the opening ceremony. I mean, look at the reaction of the crowd. What was it like speaking in front of, what, 80,000 spectators? I think it was a great honor for me to be there in front of the house, um, the whole stadium, and uh, the response I got. So I'm happy that I was there. And uh, for me, it's uh, the first time I presided over the game, so it was something new for me, for the Asian game. Though I've been involved with the Olympic Council of Asia for now 32 years. It's a long, time, long journey. And, uh, and the opening ceremony was fantastic. What was it like seeing these Asian Games coming into fruition uh, despite all the challenges brought up by COVID? And now um, being there, uh, seeing the Games opening, uh, what was it like? I think it's far more than one expected. It's, they've done, China's done a great job. And Hancock has done a great job. Um, if you look at it, I was, I've been here twice for the coordination committee. I was chairing the coordination committee. And I've been here twice and to see the facilities coming up. So I saw the whole thing coming up. And it's not that you were behind times or you were, you know, there's no problem. You were on time. Then they kept, the pandemic came. And that dis disturbed the fact that we couldn't hold the games. But then still, we came back and did a brilliant job. Brilliant job. Proves to the world how capable China is for holding a multi-games like the Olympic Games or the Asian Games. Fantastic. So what do you think of the opening ceremony? How did that impress you? The opening ceremony was amazing. Uh, as, I've, as we've been talking about it, I've been there for many of the games. And I started my journey with my father when I was very young. I was there for the first Asian Games. The 1950s. 1951. I was, I'm 46 born, so I was five years old. So my uncle at that time was the president of the Asian Games, Maharaja Yadav Singh. And then uh, my father became in 1982. He was president of the Asian Games. 82 for me was also a great honor because I was competing when my father was president. You won a gold medal in shooting. Then I won. You no, know, I won a silver and a bronze in Delhi, yes. but I won a gold in 1978. This year, my daughter's competing. So to see her also in the March past, was a, it was a great feeling for me. I know how she must have felt on the other side of it, seeing her father there. Very proud, huh? Yes, I'm very proud of very her. Very proud moment. Very proud of her. So it's our family's also been a long journey in the Asian Games from 1951 till now. It's a long journey. Many years, 60 years, 60 plus years, two years. Talking about the opening ceremony, we saw ancient history, we saw modernity of China. There was fire, there was, of course, water, tidal waves there. Was there a wow moment that really impressed you? The whole ceremony was fantastic. The way it was done, the digital system way of doing it, and, and all the technology that, that went into it, and the beautiful dances, as you mentioned, and from traditional to the modern world, it was beautifully done. Even the lighting of the flame was something but unique. And you know, watching the athlete run across um, digitally, and then having some of the great Chinese athletes running with the torch. I mean, it was breathtaking. Everyone loved it. And there were some, lots of people there in the, 
uh, sitting with us and uh, who, have be, who have been seen multi-sports events and they said it's one of the best that they've seen or in fact the best. Before the games you said this game could be the best Asian games ever. Do you still think it that way? The way we are going, yes, certainly. I think so. You know, if you look at the facility from the time we get off the plane and right down to the village, I'm talking about the athlete's point of view, and from, from as you come off the plane, the people are there to receive you. You go through all your circuit, then you go to the village, and the village is absolutely amazing. And the venues are very nice. So once that is there, the athlete performs his best. And if he performs his best, you get the best sport to watch. And then, um, then the crowds are very supportive. Crowds are definitely very, very supportive. We saw that in the opening ceremony. And um, so I'm sure it will be great games. And the technology that is being used, uh, absolutely fantastic. The lighting of the cauldron. Beautifully was, done. It was a bit of a surprise to uh, many viewers. Yes, it was amazing. It was amazing, amazing. In fact, it's given a tough job for the pe people who are following. For example? The other countries that have to have the games in the future, they'll, they'll, they'll have to keep... Including the Paris Olympics, you think? <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but I, but I hope they have, it, have a good ceremony as well, as well as well as the Asian Games. You said that the slogan of this Asian Games in Hangzhou, hard to hard that future, is not just a slogan. You know, we have a great unity in Asia, and the continent is very strong. And if you look at our performances, and even if you look at our results internationally, Asia is coming up. The, uh, otherwise, there were certain countries that were doing very well. First, there was Japan, Korea, and the countries, a bit of India. Then you suddenly saw slowly China come up. I remember in the 70s, the Chinese shooter shooting with me. It was for them, it was, it was like the first time they'd come. And from there to now, they're doing a brilliant, brilliant job. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So if you look at that side of it, as a sports, sports standard going up, on the other side, you look at the brotherhood between us. It's not just a question of uh, competing, or it's just not a question of just heart-to-heart -heart slogan. It's, it's generally meant. And there is a lot of love and affection between the athletes and the continent, and people are happy. And the whole, whole idea, the concept of the games, to me, my way of thinking is that uh, it brings the youth together, brings the public together, brings the soul minds together, and that's what you look for. And you do that, you've done your job in the world of sport. And in the world of sport, that's what we're looking at. To bring everyone together, bring everyone together to the platform. And then the pride that we are Asians. And when we go, go and compete against the other four continents, so we obviously feel we are, we are one up on the next continent. And you look at our games, our games are superior to everyone. And uh, everything, I mean, it's, uh, everything is plus plus for us. I don't find anything negative. Yes, we all have issues. If issues carry on, issues carry on between countries. But issue carries on between people. Um, in families, we have trouble. And issues happen. But then, the family is family. But as long as you think of yourself as a family, everything is, can be sorted out. Nothing can be wrong. You played sports. You governed sport as administrator globally, and you lived sport. Really, what you just said led to my next question. How do you look at the unifying power of sport? How would you explain that to our global viewers? I think that it's the greatest movement. Sport is much more a uniting factor than anybody else. I think so. the world of sports is much, we shouldn't say it. I mean, one shouldn't brag about themselves, but I think uh, what the Olympic movement does, we do much more than the United Nations does. And we are getting people, I mean, we get more love and affection between each other than many countries can get together through other agencies. And then my love in sports has been, I've grown with it. Uh, I started competing for my country in 1963 in pre Olympics in Tokyo. So that's 60 years this year. Then I became a sports administrator. But I had the benefit, my father and my uncle had been there before that. So I've, I went to the first Asian Games in 1951. I went to the Olympic Games with my father in Helsinki in 1952. So it's been a long journey for me. What I learned more than just the fact of competing is, is the brotherhood and the family and the friends. I mean, that was meant much more. 
esports and break dancing were added to Asian games for the first time ever. And also we have some Asian specialties, kabaddi, among other things, kick volleyball. Sabertakao. How do you think these Asian sports can inspire the global Olympic movement? They are because you look at the wushu's come up, you have taekwondo is there, uh, you have kabaddi is coming up, and we're looking at cricket now. Cricket is a sport which is very dear to us, especially to India. And cricket may be, may, may be recognized sport for the Los Angeles Olympic Games. So things are looking up, things are moving, moving, things are moving very well. And Asian sports are doing very well. Any of your favorite food? What is your favorite food here in Hangzhou, China? Anything impressed you so far? I love Chinese food, but I like the spicier one more. The shish, uh, what's it called? The Sichuan food. The sp uh, spicier. Any dish that comes up? What I loved very much was the uh, West, uh, West uh, Lake uh, fish. Uh, uh, the West one, Lake fish? Yes, that was very nice. We, we had it, yeah, it was very nice. I like Chinese food. I enjoy uh, Chinese food. We eat a lot of Chinese food at home. By the way, our cooks make Chinese food. You cook Chinese food? Yes, uh, we cook what Chinese food. No, my, my staff cooks. I mean, they cook. Mm -hmm. They know how to cook. I love cooking. I'm writing a book on cooking, but Indian, Indian cuisine, nothing to do with uh, Chinese food. But Thank you very Thank much, you. Good Thank, you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Known as paradise on earth, Hangzhou in East China boasts beautiful natural scenery, rich history, and a fast-growing economy. Is now the host city of the 19th Asian Games. 40 sports, 481 events, 56 venues, 16 days. The Asian Games have come to China for the third time. Join us for our special coverage of the largest sports meet of a dynamic Asia, September 21st to October the 8th on CGTN. That was the acting president from the Olympic Council of Asia. Now we hear such words as Asian Brotherhood. That's beautiful, isn't it? That's beautiful description. And these are beautiful games. Now, I also had a chance to talk to the world's basketball governing association FIBA president, Mr. Sheikh Saud Ali Al Thani. Watch my interview. President Al Thani, it's a great pleasure to have you on our program. We know that uh, you're the current chair of the world, the Federation of Basketball, but prior to that, you were chairman of the Asian Basketball Federation for many years. So, first of all, maybe you can tell us. Uh, your expectations for the upcoming Hangzhou Asian Games and particularly in the event of basketball? Well, first of all, let me, let me congratulate uh, China as, as a nation for hosting this and uh, China all the time hosting very best and very good uh, events. Mm -hmm. I hope all the best for, China, for the Chinese and for China as, as a country. And uh, I wish all the best for, for, for the, the Asian game as an Asian game. And uh, I hope to see good, uh, good events in, in basketball. I'm very confident that we have uh, very good uh, games in, in, in the basketball and uh, wish all the best for all the teams, especially the, the Chinese team. Uh, I, I wish uh, they, they, can get, they, they can perform better in this, in this time than, than the World Cup. In the World Cup, maybe they have some injuries, and uh, I wish they, they, they got uh, better uh, results. I mean, obviously, you're representing over 200 uh, basketball associations, uh, representing over, uh, over 200 uh, countries in terms of basketball. It, it's hard to ask you this, but uh, what would be some of the teams that you think are the all-zone favorite to win the gold medal this year at Asian Games? Well, uh, still, still I'm Asian. Even if I'm representing 200 or more than 200 countries, but still I am Asian and I am proud of Asia. The basketball is, is my important piece of my life, you know. Wish all the best for Asian basketball. Of course, uh, I, I wish all the best for the whole world, but uh, for Asia, it's a special, special case. Exactly. Talking about the Hangzhou Asian Games, can I show you something? Yeah. It's heart to heart. Yeah. How do you like it? It's future. Very good. The whole game is, is, is heart to heart. Asia, usually uh, one family. We had a good time. And regardless of the results, uh, we are we still like each other. And uh, I hope we still 
like each other and support each other. So this is heart to heart. And uh, I wish to see all the Asians people, wherever they go and, and everywhere, they're heart to heart. Talking about being Asian, I'm Asian myself. Uh, we have fond memories of the Asian Games in uh, Doha, Qatar, uh, not so long ago, where the prince uh, rode the horse up the slope and lit the torch, which uh, really encapsulated uh, the spirit of your home country, which really encapsulated the spirit of the Asian Games. I mean, what would be your expectations for the opening ceremony of the Hangzhou Games or the Games in general? Well, uh, I, I'm confident that China, China they, they will have a good opening ceremony. And uh, China, they had the Asian Games for more than one time, and they are uh, more experienced of, of the Asian Games. And I'm confident that they, they, will, they will do a good, good, good opening. But I'm, unfortunately, I'm in the Continental uh, uh, Cup. Otherwise, uh, all, always I attend uh, the, these, these events, you know. I, li I, like, I like to be in the Asian game, but uh, this, this time I have the, 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 Asia, the, the Continental Cup. I wish uh, all the best for, for, for all, all, all the athletes and all the games. You know, just out of curiosity, Mr. President, uh, you're the chair of the Basketball Association of the World, but uh, other than basketball, if you were here, if you could make it to Hangzhou, uh, what other events would you check out? Well, most, most of the events I like. I like athletics. Uh, I like volleyball. I like uh, mo mo most of the games that I like. It. Whenever, whenever I come to, the, to the, such, such uh, games, I attend mo most of the, of the games. I, I try to, to, to cover everything. But basketball is the first. Basketball is the favorite, you know. <laughs> I can't watch it for the whole day. Exactly, exactly. Um, I think uh, you would be more than you would have been more than welcome to come if you could make it. Talking about Chinese basketball, we have a major legend, uh, Yi Jianlian. Uh, we call him Alian here in China. That's his nickname. Is there anything you want to say to Yi Jianlian? We had we had him in good in, in good shape, and they wish him good future wish and i thank him for what he gave to basketball for china or for asia or for the world reflect the the chinese the chinese uh, people uh, i wish him all the best i wish him uh, good life and uh, i wish i wish i can see him all in good health but there is also a sense of sadness here in china because if you look around what we call the moving great wall yao ming obviously retired long ago Da Zhi, Wang Zhizhi retired uh, long ago as well, and now uh, Yi Jianlian re is retiring. You see, Yao Ming is a legend for either for, for basketball or for Asia. We are, as an Asian, we are very proud of Yao Ming. He represents Asia and, and, and the NBA and in the world and the uh, Asia in the Olympic Games. I remember when, when, they beat, when we beat uh, Serbia, I go, to, I go to the court and, and uh, congratulate everybody. Uh, Yao Ming is, is something for us as as Asian. You know, Yao Ming uh, is some 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 ideal things as as basketball. Wang Zizi was a good player. Uh, you have such such a good players. You know, I I don't want to to mention the other names because I don't want to forget the names. You know, but you have you have very good very good players. But Yao Ming is top of them. You know, Yao Ming, Yao Ming is some something uh, unique. You know, for for Asia and for us. But there's, a, like I said, there's also a sense of uncertainty here in China among the basketball fans. And they ask this question, will we be able to produce more Yao Mings and uh, Da Zhis and uh, Yi Jianlians in the future? The Chinese basketball, it looks like, is, um, you know, uh, reaching a historic low point, uh, is, you know, on its way to bottom out, hopefully, uh, before it regains its path towards another glory. I'm confident that China can produce more, more than one Yao Ming. You know, they have Wang Zizi before, but Yao Ming takes time you know, for, for China to, to get over uh, Yao Ming affection on the team. Uh, I'm confident that they, 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 will, they will produce another player. You see, not all the players are the same. You know. Sometimes you have, you have one player, but I'm, I'm confident that China, will, they will have much better players in the future. Great, thank you for the, the well wishes. This is, you see, this is my feeling. I'm not, 
I'm not exaggerating. I'm, this is my feeling about China. China, when China is strong, that means Asia is strong. China is, is the big representative of, of Asia. So we are, as Asians, we are very proud of China, either with, with Yao Ming or without Yao Ming. You know, China, China is, is something for us, especially the women team. You have very great uh, women team. And in the World Cup in, uh, in Australia, last, last World Cup, uh, the Chinese team was, was very good. The women team, we're, 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 we are proud of them, you know? And they, they compete with America, the, team, the, the, the only team who, who compete with America. The other team, they, they were beyond from America. China, they, they were, I hope that the men team can, can be in the same, you know? And I'm confident that China will, will, will come back to, to the basketball. You mentioned uh, three by three half court uh, basketball. In fact, uh, FIBA uh, first introduced uh, three by three basketball. I guess uh, it was in 2010 at the Youth Olympics of the World and uh, the ensuing World Cups, um, you know, introduced the three by three um, formats of basketball as well. Uh, what is the significance of, uh, you know, promoting three by three basketball? in helping promote the sport of the basketball. Three by three is a street basketball. Two ten, they had it in, in, the, in the youth uh, Olympic games. Within 10 years, it becomes in Tokyo as, as Asia uh, Olympic games. Three by three is a very, very you know, fast growing team. The last year we have 20, 20, 200 events and hoping the schedule this year will have more than 200 events as a three on three all over uh, the world. It's, it's a spirit too, too fast. It's in the, the Olympic Games, it was very attractive. Three on three, one of the game, which is a present basketball, even for the, for, the, for the small countries, like Mongolia, they become in the Olympic Games uh, as, as a team, within, although they are a small country and uh, they don't have, they don't have uh, great basketball, you know, but. And three or three, they are they are they are good now, so this is good 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 future for for the for the small countries to participate in. It's also the big countries uh, we can't forget that they can't participate. But three on three is is growing very fast. So I hope I hope in the future we can have more more, more events in three on three all over the world. Yeah, you know, Mr. President, uh, three by three basketball is called a world's number one urban team sport. Uh, that is according to FIBA website, I think. Um, do you agree? Obviously, you do, right? But why is it called number one urban team sport of the world? Because it's easy, you know, to gather three, to four players and go all over the world to, to play. It's very easy. They don't have a coach. They don't have. They don't, they don't need anyone with them. Just four players. They can go all over. Either a national team or local people, you know, they, they can gather without any things, you know, just gather and they can play it. And it's easy to have the tools for it, you know. So I think the future is for, for it. Of course, the five by five is still is there, but the three on three is, you know, is, is growing very fast. I mean, if you, Mr. President, if you think about three by three basketball, it really originated in the 1980s in the United States, right? to demonstrate this love, this passion for this sport. So what, in your opinion, can 3x3 three three basketball teach and enlighten and inform the rest of the um, events and disciplines? It's easy to, to, to play. I, I, everywhere you can play it, you know. You don't have to, to have uh, special places and special equipment, you know. You can play it anywhere. It's a street basket, and uh, we, we hope uh, the future is for it, you know. And then one question that is on the mind of many is how to reduce the, um, the gap between Asian basketball and uh, European and American basketball, chief among them the NBA and some major European leagues, for example, in Spain and Serbia and Germany. Um, what is FIBA doing to reduce the gap? Well, uh, we are trying to, to, to encourage the, the countries to, to work and uh, we are supporting uh, as 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 a coaches, you know, we have the coaches association. We are having all all all, all over Asia clinics for 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 the coaches, and uh, we are, uh, you know, we are asking the people to or encourage the people to to uh, 
to 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 develop their 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 players and to have special special courses for 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 the players to uh, to become more 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 of a more more uh, professional you know europe uh, and nba no doubt that they they work very hard to to develop themselves i hope uh, asia can can come with africa they can they can come again and 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 uh, make make much better basketball and we are confident that they they can make it if they they work hard for it you have to you know you have to 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 love it so you can you can make it uh, finally what will be your recommendations for chinese basketball especially men's basketball who's uh, you know having some uh, challenges and difficulties as it's emerging from uh, a post Yao Ming and post the Dodger and post the Yi Liang world. See, China, uh, I'm confident that China they have they have good talent, but just need to work, work and work, and uh, love the g- game. So you become become. I th- I'm confident that China will come back. The men they will, they will come back, uh, but you know may, may, maybe sometime you know generation generation you know that just depends on the generation. Uh, but uh, but this is, doesn't mean China as as the women became became good good team, I think the men they they become good team, and just just they need to work and work, and and uh, sweat for 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 the game to to become good good uh, team. President Arthani, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I think. Uh... You know, if you look at this uh, motto again, at future, um, we're living in the digital world and uh, we're doing this Zoom interview thanks to modern technology and digital technology. And thank you for your time, obviously. Thank you. Now that will do it for this edition of the Hub on CGTN Live from the Hangzhou Asian Games. Now stay updated on the competition itself and the athletes and the events. Follow us on your favorite social media platforms and follow me on my personal accounts at Wang Guan Beijing on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you later.